Hey guys, well, welcome. Thanks for joining me again tonight. And man, I can't wait to see what God's going to do. I know it's going to be a night of encouragement and prayer and hope and faith. And uh, Pastor Rusty Nelson, one of my dear friends, thank you for joining me tonight and being a part of this, Pastor Rusty. Hey, it is a an honor. I, anytime I can hang with you, I don't care if we're not we're not sitting in the same room, but if I can just hang with you, that is the joy of life. Hey, well, you're very kind, and that's mutual. I love it. I love for us to be together. You know, man, we go back and uh, quite a while. I was thinking about you guys uh, with Karen Wheaton when you sang with Karen Wheaton. One of the first groups we ever had come in the storefront. You know, little facility we had to kick to start Calvary to plant the church. And uh, of course, you were just a kid, just a baby. And uh, <laughs> I care back then. Yeah, you did. I remember that. And then I remember when your dad uh, first started the, the the church there at Double Springs, and uh, they were meeting. And I don't know. And I still don't know what who got us together. I I think we were both church planters back in the day when it wasn't titled yet. And uh, I actually went out, Rusty, and preached for your dad in that uh, temporary. Um, like motorhome uh, modular. It was a double wide. It was, yeah, excuse me, a double wide. And, uh, <laughs> and went and actually spoke for your dad there. So, uh, you know, it's really neat. And man, just, we celebrate you guys. What a great church in Huntsville, the rock and, and uh, just love our friendship, love the ministry. And uh, again, it's, it's, it's really neat that we get to do this together. Well, I'm thankful. You know, I, um, you are, have been an inspiration, not only to my life, but to, I mean, to so many, when you planted church, you were, you planted Calvary when there was no even thought of what church we, we had, there was no dialect, there was no language, how no. do you plant your team, no. your launch, and, you know, you hear all these terms now, and you kind of scratch your head, but, um, but you are a spiritual father in this whole region, and I'm so grateful for you and this fellas, you, you um, thank you for paving a way because I, I really feel we were able to step in at a, at a season here in Huntsville, uh, not because um, nothing had ever been done, but because men of God like you had paved a way. And I feel like we're beneficiaries of, of, of fights we never fought. Well, we fought a few, but yeah. not the ones you fought. <laughs> Well, you know, uh, there are going to be some of those things because we're, we're, uh, we've got an adversary, Satan, and he doesn't want the church to go. But, man, he can't stop it. And, and, and God's using you guys greatly. You know, Pastor Rusty, we were talking a moment ago. And uh, the whole purpose for these evenings, uh, you're, you're, you are doing this in the morning and then your guys doing worship in the evenings. You know, we're just trying to encourage people. We're just saying, hey, uh, let's get some good news out there. Let's put some hope and and some life and some faith, not just not just uh, wishing and uh, dreaming, but the reality of God's word, that his word is true and that mm -hmm. God is God and he's faithful and that God is going to do what he said, even in these days and times. So that, that's what we're here and that's what we're doing. And uh, that's what we're here about tonight. Uh, I've been following a theme most of the evenings. Uh, we talked about it. Our dear friend, Pastor Tommy Barnett was with me last night and oh uh and i didn't i i just kind of let him do what he wanted to do you know he's the legend <laughs> yes. and and uh and, and it was wonderful he was tommy barnett as only tommy barnett can be so but but i've been having this theme using these two little words that i love in scripture that mm -hmm. god interjects in a in a hopeless moment that changes everything and maybe tonight pastor rusty as you and i are here uh, we have so many, there are hundreds and hundreds of people joining us, maybe, uh, you know, into the thousands that the, maybe you had a rough day. Maybe uh, someone in your family had a positive test for the coronavirus. By the way, let me help you with that. We've just had, I, I'm, it's, I'm, we're having a hard time keeping up with it. I can't tell you the number of people that, that we're aware of who've been tested and they're negative. Uh, they were around it. They, they were, there, somebody tested positive at their work. In many situations, I'm going to tell you, uh, healthcare providers, uh, co-workers, family members, people living in the home with them, and they're all negative reports, negative reports. I'm just so thankful how God is just answering prayer. But maybe today, you know, hadn't been a good day for you. Maybe maybe someone close to you got a positive report. Maybe you were exposed to something. I don't know how you're feeling. I don't know what your job situation is. But we're here tonight to remind you that God can always have the last word, and he will. And that's what but God means. It's that, again, that two-word 
uh, place, that, that interjection where heaven meets earth. And God says, Pastor Rusty, you know, uh, I know it's tough and I know it doesn't look good, but God isn't finished. And there's a verse that caught my attention in Philippians 2.27. Paul was very concerned about one of those in his ministry team. And he says this, indeed, he was ill and almost died. So a, a very dangerous situation. Indeed, he was ill and almost died, but God. I love that. Right in the midst. It's so appropriate for where we are. He was dying, but God had mercy on him uh, and, and he spared him. So, you know, Pastor Rusty, that's what we want to say tonight. Uh, I know you've had a lot of but God moments in your life, in, in personally with, with the church. And we've seen we've seen those moments where um, reality is it looks bad. Reality mm -hmm. is things are tough. As men and women of faith, we're not denying the reality of the coronavirus. Its effects, mm -hmm. the, you know, economically, physically, emotionally. But we're saying there's a but God moment for every one of us. And that's that's kind of what we're doing here tonight. You've seen those before. Well, I love it that all those moments that God loves to flip the script. That's right. You know, he's he's the ultimate wrestler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, whenever Jacob wrestled with him, God uh, flipped his name. Yes, he, he flipped did. the moment when he was known as a deceiver. And God said, no, I'm gonna, I'm, you're going to be known as a prince. You're going to be known as, yeah. as, as one who... I'm going to change your name, but you'll walk with a limp the rest of your life. Yeah. It's not to say that those times, Pastor George, do not affect us. Sure. Do. You know, Paul Paul even said in, in Galatians 6, he was talking about, um, you know, how that this whole crucified life. And he said, the world is, I've crucified the whole interest in the world. Uh, I've, I've crucified that interest and, and I've realized the world's not interested in me anymore. Yeah. The more he turned into that, but what it cost him to get to that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those, those moments when you feel like, you know, God, what, what are you going to do in this? I, I think about Habakkuk and uh, God's really had me digging in Habakkuk one, two, and three, mm -hmm. probably about three weeks ago, right at the very onset of this, I started going through that little book, that little prophetic book, and was probably, you know, he wrote it around three years before the Babylonian captivity began. Right. And he had all these questions. God, why are you, are you not listening to us? Mm. Do you not see the injustice? Do you not see what's going on? And then he realizes God's going to use Babylon to bring Judah to her knees. Mm. And so why would you use a pagan nation? Why, why are you doing this? And and then the Lord, that's when we all love, the, I love the passion, the passage that says, write the vision down, Yes, you know, that others may read it and run with it. And, uh, but before you get to that, he said, I've got to get up on the watchtower. I've got to see what God is saying there to me. Go. There you go. I, I've got to, uh, I've got to see this, but God moment. Yeah. I, I see all of the turmoil that's going on, but I've got to, I've got to see what he's saying to me. And when the Lord told him, I want you to write this vision down, I began asking that, what was the vision you wanted him to see? Yeah. He said, write it down. And then you realize, he says at the end of chapter two, the Lord is in his holy temple. Mm. Let all the earth be silent. Mm. And he gets a glimpse of God himself. Yeah. And starts pinning one of the most beautiful Psalms. But here's... Here's the nugget in that that God really spoke to me about. And he said, I see God moving. Yes. And in front of him, there's pestilence. Right. Behind him is a plague. But God is in the middle of it. Yeah. And I couldn't see God until I got up on the watchtower of prayer. Mm -hmm. And I had an encounter with the Holy One. Yes. And I realized all the injustices, even the discipline of what was coming to Judah. Mm -hmm. He said, but I see God moving. Yes. And yeah. he's in the middle of all of this. And I believe, Brother George, that, you know, there's a plague behind him. There's pestilence in front of him. Yeah. God is in the middle of this moving. Yes. And calling us. Yes, he is. And, you know, Rusty, that that's, uh, Pastor Rusty, that's so important that we, that we understand that it, we can become so focused on what's wrong, you know, 
um, uh, you know, all the, the negative information, you know, every day we're, we're, we're tracking. That's why I shared a moment ago, all the people that have been tested negative, you know, we're, and there's nothing wrong, you know, but every day, this is the number that's positive. These are the numbers that have passed away. This is, you know, and it's just, it's just there and it, it's growing and it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's all around us. And if we're not careful, we, we allow ourselves to say, you know, there's nothing I can do. You know, there, there, there's, you know, I'm just going to sit here and wait. But the truth of the matter is God's still in control and, yes. and, and he's faithful. And in those moments uh, when it's all around us like this, we can see that, but God moment and they're happening. But, but again, I really do believe pastor Rusty that what you said, and I, I continue to get this from so many streams for, for you and I, as the people of God, we must during this time, uh, we we have to hear him. We have to find him. We we have to seek the Lord with all of our heart. You know, Second Chronicles seven fourteen, which we've quoted and quoted and quoted to kick off many kind of prayer meetings, and it was appropriate. But when you come to today, and you see the promise of that, if my people yes. who are called by my name, and then these things we do, we humble ourselves. You yeah. know, it's a time for that, uh, and pray. Get on the watchtower, and and seek my face. And then he says. And turn from our wicked ways. So it's a time of saying, you know, God, and you know what I love about that, Rusty? Let's look at this. He, he addresses two groups in that. Uh, all this trouble is going on. All these things are around us. It, no, nothing about a virus or a plague was mentioned. Nothing mm -hmm. about what anybody else does. Nothing was mentioned about political decisions or political parties. He said, if my people, all right, that's it. We don't have to have everyone. We don't need a new law. We don't have to have a referendum. If my people right there who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and then it becomes very personal and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I'll heal the land. You know, Rusty, I, I don't think for a minute that this is a punishment from God. I don't think God sent the coronavirus. You and I both agree on that, that, that thing. But in the midst of this, yeah. if we will... Uh, allow this to push us to God, cry out to God. God says healing is coming, yes. but we have to be willing to look at ourselves first. And to me, that's not negative. It's wonderful. I don't have to worry about somebody else. Rusty, we don't have to worry who's praying. If God's people are praying yes. and we're turning from our wicked ways, it doesn't matter what anybody else is going to do. God says, I'm going to heal that land. And, and that's, that's where we are. And, and, and those are, but God moments, you know, I know we're, I'm praying for the researchers, for the medical uh, professionals for everyone doing their work. But I pray every day, and I know you're doing it as well. God's in this virus in such a fashion that you get the glory, you know, that, 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 you know, and maybe for some people think I'm a little delusional in this. I, I'm, well, I'm not, I'm washing my hands. I'm using my disinfectant. I'm, you know, doing, I'm social distancing. Uh, it's weird. I went in the grocery store the other day and it's like people, people were acting like, if I don't look, you're not there. It was hilarious. It was, I was pushing the cart with, Phil is usually so good about going to the grocery store. You know, when I go, I'm out of my league there. So, so I'm searching around. It takes me 30 minutes to find three things because I don't know where it is. But every time I turn a corner and somebody has was pushing their cart, it was like, okay, don't make eye contact and they're not there. So I, it's, it's kind of funny. But uh, the, the point is, we understand all those things are real. And I, I, but I'm still praying every day, God, in a way that brings you glory in this thing. That that everyone sees your hand, but in the process, what I can control, Pastor Rusty, I'm praying, I'm seeking God, I'm humbling myself, I'm looking at my life before I'm looking at someone else's life. And you know, if we'll do that, we're going to come out of this thing better people. We're going to be a better church. Well, that's what that's what I kept seeing in uh, in the the prophecy of Habakkuk. I kept seeing this because he said the glory of the whole earth, the glory of the Lord is going to fill the earth. Yes. You know, he, while he was, what is it? You can't see the mountain for the trees. You right. can't see what's behind the moment. Right. But you're so consumed with everything that's in the moment. Right. And it's so easy to get distracted. It's so easy for us to get our eyes on the wrong thing. Yes. Because fear will start gripping your life if you get your eyes on the wrong thing. Absolutely. It's not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And we've all been quoting that scripture a lot lately. Yes, we have. Yet it was the moment he got up high. I like and that. He, see beyond. He got up out of the trees. He got up. His, he, he was so distracted by everything around him. Mm. 
And God has actually, it's, if you would have told me that in a week's time, every idol of America and really of the world would be shut down. Everyone, you're right. To where now there is nothing, and he's put us in a place where, as you said, Pastor, it starts with my people. Yes. He said, I'm getting my people in a place, but I want you to get up above all of the distractions. Yes. And catch a glimpse of me. Yes. I love See it. me. And you know, Pastor Rusty, we can do that. Uh, no matter where we are, no matter you know what the circumstance or the situation is, we can do that. And yes. and you know what the good news is? When we begin to seek the Lord, he's not running from us. He's coming to us. Draw near to, draw near to the Lord. He draws near to you. You know, uh, as we seek him, he's seeking us. And, and that's the beauty. He's not a distant God, a hidden God, a foreign God. He, he, he's right there moving toward yeah. us. Well, that's it. He is the God who he's the pursuer. Yes. I was talking with um, someone yesterday. We were talking about just the goodness of God mm. and how do you pursue God? And you turn around, you realize he's been pursuing you your whole life, your whole life. He's the one who's waiting on us to respond to his wink, to his drawing. Yes. He, he draws us to himself. And even the response of love. Yes. God flips the script because it's not that you loved me, but I loved you. Yes. And because of that, you can respond to me. I grace you to respond to me. Yes. And just see the see the glory, the weighty recognition of who he is. Absolutely. It's amazing, isn't it? You, you think about it, uh, Pastor. He, God was pursuing us before we were ever saved. That's yeah. how we found him. He was pursuing us when yes. we were foolish and lost. So how much more? Does he pursue us once we belong to him? You know, he he's he, he's the God who is for us. He's the God who is with us. You know, Psalms 23, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you're with me. You know, I'm not afraid. You're with me. God is with us in this. God is for us in this. Uh, yes. God is revealing himself to us in this. And I think what we have to understand, you know, we're not victims in this moment. We're not defeated in this moment. Um, I, I believe if you look in scripture, uh, every time, if you, it's, it's interesting. Every time God's people were isolated, they came out stronger than ever before. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's just this like rebirthing, you know, I'm thinking about Easter coming up. Of course we all are. And it's like, you know, what if, what if pastor, uh, the church is resurrected a new glory and anointing and influence, uh, as we come out of this, I think about acts two and Verses 42 through 47, it ends and says, and they had favor with all the people. That's really not the status of the church in America today, that we have favor with all the people. But what if God could so use us during this time? And what if our relationship with him could be so powerful that, yeah. that we come out of this, a church resurrected uh, in, the, in the image and likeness of Christ, that, that this hurting world begins to favor again. And the Lord added to their number daily, those being saved. You know, when Joel was releasing that word that said, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. You know, that the whole call of let the bride come out of her chamber. Yes. You know, everybody, everybody's been coming out of the closet over the last few years. Well, that's true. true. <laughs> but yet, I think everybody but the church. Yes. And I believe God has... God has pushed us in the closet, said, come away with me. Yes. I'm going to isolate you. I'm going to turn off the noise and I want you to come away with me and let me, let me do something so intimately in you during this time, during this season, that as you said, growing in favor with God and with man and the church coming out of this literally coming out of the place of cl the closet, the secret place of the Most High. I, I believe those are characteristics of great awakenings. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know he, I, I truly believe with you that my heart is, you know, I'm, I believe the rapture can happen tomorrow. Yes. But as one old timer said, I'm, I, I'm looking for the rapture. But I've got my eyes on the capture yeah. as much as on the rapture. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Pastor Rusty, what we're hearing, what I hear you saying, what I feel like the Holy Spirit's saying, we have to embrace this moment. 
Let's yes. stop fighting it. Let's embrace it. Let, let's embrace the presence of God. Let's, let's say, God, do something great in us. Do something great through us. And I believe that he will. Well, man, I tell you what, this time's flying by. And uh, I, I just, as always, I love our fellowship. And I, I love this time together. Uh, Pastor Rusty, uh, I'm going to ask you to pray. Then I'll pray to close. You know, however the Lord may lead you tonight, we're praying for encouragement and hope and healing and, and, and provision. Just what, whatever you, you sense direction then I want to close this out with prayer. Would you do that? Just just pray for, for those that are with us. I would be honored. Father, thank you so very yes, much. God. Yes, God. That you've given us the technology that, uh, Lord, even though we, we are can tend to feel isolated at times, yet it's as if you have said to us, but I always told you, you're not alone. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Yes, yes God. God, you gave the ability for us to connect around the world mm-hmm. with this moment. Mm-hmm to God, to be able to stand in solidarity in prayer. Yes. I thank you for Pastor George. I thank you for Calvary. I thank you, Lord God, for a ministry that has, Lord, so many seed in the ground and the harvest that has come through the years. But I believe the greatest days are yet ahead. Yes, God. Lord, I pray that we as your church, Lord, thank you in these moments that it's not about a name tag over a doorpost. Mm-hmm. It is about your kingdom. Yes. It is about your men and women, your family that you call to yourself. And I pray the encouragement of the Lord to be in their life. Yes. I pray, Father, that we would be a people of clean hands mm-hmm. and a pure heart yes, God. so that we could ascend the hill of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And, Father, to come out of the closet, out of this place of intimacy. Mm-hmm. And you said, I will reward you openly. Give us signs and wonders. Yes, God. Father, I pray that it would be a great awakening in our nation. God, we have to have revival. Yes, we do. And I pray that through this, there would be not a turning toward you, but a turning to you. Mm-hmm. And Lord, would you just would you just touch your people today that may be, Lord, that may be confused or, Lord, going through just depression. I pray that that would be broken off of their life mm-hmm. and they would sense the but God moment. Yes, God. That even when the enemy comes in, come like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard yes, against it. Yes, God. Yes, so we bless your people today and yes, thank you for the honor of being able to just sit and share tonight and, and just be an expression of your heart and thank your you love. God. Yes, God. Thank you. thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Pastor Rusty. Church and folks, we got Rock Family Church and Calvary and everybody else that's wrapped up with us tonight. Friends, man, we're glad to do this. I want to just leave this blessing, this but God blessing as we go. You know, maybe you're you're not feeling well, but God is Jehovah Rapha. Maybe you're worried about your finances, but God is Jehovah Jireh, your provider. Maybe you're anxious and fearful, but God is Jehovah Shalom, the God of all peace. Uh, but you're, you're, you're looking at an intimidating army coming against you, but God is Jehovah Nisi, waving the banner of victory over you. In Jesus' name, we declare that Psalm 91 is true over you, over your family, as we are dwelling, living, abiding under the shadow of his wing, as we are under the, the wing of the, the shadow of the Most High, the Almighty God, the pestilence is destroyed, the, the plague is, is defeated, the favor of God is with you and on you tonight. Pastor Rusty and I just release that to you and believe that you're going to experience your own but God moment when everything shifts and God gets the glory in the testimony. Pastor Rusty, thank you for joining me tonight. Bless you and, and Lisa and the Rock Family Church and, and your family. We love you.